Hi, this is Justin Gordon. I'm thrilled you're interested in learning about React on Rails. In this short video, I'm going to show you what happens when you run the generator in React on Rails, and I'm going to give you an overview of all the changes that we make to your files. Here's the command to run the generator, Rails generate React on Rails install. You want to make sure before you run this that you don't have any pending Git any pending changes in your Git repository, and you need to have Git installed. The reason why is we're gonna make a lot of changes to a lot of files, and we wanna make sure that you can see those changes. So you run this command, and we're gonna generate all these different files. Now I'm gonna show you in RubyMine exactly what happened to all these files. What are all these files about? What do they do, etc. cetera? For running the, um, the generator, we get these files are generated. We've got 18 files. What does each one of these files do? So let's look at the git ignore file. The changes in the git ignore file are we're running, um, we're adding a few things to our git ignore because these are things that we just don't want to have included in your git repository, things like generated files. It just wouldn't make any sense. It would really clutter some things up. Let's take a look at your application JS file. Your application.js file, we're going to require the webpack bundle file. Now, webpack bundle, so how are we going to find the webpack bundle? Well, first of all, and what is the webpack bundle file? The webpack bundle file is going to be the file that we compile using webpack that takes all your JavaScript assets and puts it in this file. That's going to be configured in a few different places. The first place that's going to be configured in is going to be in your React on Rails configuration here for Webpack generated files, your Webpack bundle.js. So that's great. This says that that's going to be, um, you know, it has to be corresponding right there. And this is, um, we do this so that when we run the test and some other things, we need to know what are your generated files. Still, this doesn't actually say that, you know, we're not actually making anything create this file, except let me show you where this is. So in our webpack config file here, we do output file name as webpack bundle JS. That is where we're actually creating the webpack bundle. So it's got to be, you have to keep all those synchronized, those three different places. Let's take, let's keep going through and let's look at some other changes. So our assets RB file, our assets RB file says we're going to add this directory app assets webpack, and that's where we're going to put the generated files. Now we have to add the app assets webpack because by default that wouldn't be as part, it wouldn't be part of the asset pipeline. And if it wasn't part of the asset pipeline, we wouldn't be able to require the webpack bundle file. So what does that look like? It looks like this. Right here, you've got your app assets webpack. And there's your webpack bundle file. What does a webpack bundle file look like actually? If you take a look at it, it's all this compiled JavaScript. It's something that you're not really going to want to read unless you really want to understand how Webpack works. Let's take, let's keep going through this and take a look at the other files that are generated. So we've gone through gitignore application JS assets RB. Let's look at the gem file. The gem file we've got um, React on Rails is added right there, and that is. Um, There might, you might also, if you are going to be doing server rendering, you're going to have to add another gem there. So your routes file, the generator will generate hello world. So that way we can run the app and run hello world. So Babel RC, what's that all about? That's our configuration for Babel. Here's some basics that you want to set up there. If you want to read about this or learn about this, you can. However, so a lot of people just will want to follow the recipe that we're doing with React on as with React on Rails. So you don't have to learn about every detail. In the controller, what we're doing for the hello world is we're setting up the props. Name is stranger. 
Now, where's, where are these Hello World props going to go? They're going to go into the view file. So that's our controller and our view files right here. So we're going to generate, we're going to, um, this is the helper method that React on Rails gives you, React component. You're going to create, um, the name of our component is Hello World App. That's how this is the glue that ties it together, is that the helper method needs to know the name of the component. It needs to know what props you're going to pass in the component. There's a lot of other optional parameters, um, the most notable of which is pre-rendering, and we're going to turn that to false for right now. So the next place that makes sense to show you is let's dig into the JavaScript code. So here's hello world.jsx. Remember, this is the component that's going to be the top level component that integrates with our Rails app. And I'm not going to go into the details of exactly how do you create a React component, but it's pretty simple. Here's JSX. This is inside your JavaScript file. And this is going to take some, um, some data from your um, from the controller. Hello world app. This is the um, the top level file that you're gonna you're gonna have to make it. You have to have this file here will be part of your. This will be your entry point into your Webpack config. So your Webpack config, you see this right here. Hello world app. Well, hello world app. What that does is it's gonna tell React. about your component. So you register this component, Hello World App. So once that's done, that will load the Hello World JSX. And then that will load this Hello World widget. And the Hello World widget, this is an example of a stateless dumb React component. The um, example could have probably been made even simpler if it didn't even have some of this interactivity showing you the basics of how React works. However, this is a good overview for just getting a feel for how React works. Let's see if there's anything else that's really relevant that you want to make sure you understand. Um, proc file dev. This is pretty key. Um, the key thing about React on Rails is that you have to run two processes. You have your web process, and you have this, what we call the client process here, which what that's going to do is it's going to run npm run build development. So that's going to run your script to build the development environment. And that's basically what creates the React, uh, excuse me, that's how Webpack generates the file. So where is that script, the build development? That's going to be in your package JSON file right here. So build development runs Webpack W and your config. And there's even um, settings for how you do this stuff in a production mode, etc. In terms of what else there is, I think that's pretty much it. You've got, you know, this package JSON file is pretty critical for a lot for other reasons as well. The number one reason why it's critical is that this is where you're going to put all your JavaScript dependencies. The React on Rails RB, I skimmed over this a little bit, this file here, there's a lot of important configuration settings here, some of it which you're going to have to, um, you're going to have to take a closer look to at. I'd say that's a pretty good overview of pretty much everything we've got here. The, um, you can actually see the source code without running it, without going through the tutorial. I have put this up on GitHub right here at the React on Rails demo. So you can go through here and you can see the generator with Redux, the generator without Redux. There's two pull requests for this. One of them is a pull request without Redux, and one's a pull request with Redux. I encourage you to ask me questions there in the pull request, and I'm happy to answer them. Hi, this is Justin. Thank you so much for watching my tutorial on how to use the React on Rails generator. There's an incredible amount of things to learn in the React community. React Redux, React Router, Immutable, Reselect. The libraries go on and on. And there's a lot to learn about the tooling. How do you use all, how do you use Webpack? How do you use Webpack on a production project? Well, we've got a lot of experience in a lot of different projects on this. Plus, we created React on Rails, so we better know this stuff well. And then plus, 
If you hire Shaka Code, you're going to support the development of this open source project. We offer a basic coaching package to get started. We'll do Skype calls with you. We'll set you up with a private Slack room. We'll do source code reviews. We start off for a low price of $1,500. That goes in a long way, months and months, if you don't use us all too much. And actually, the companies that have hired us for this, we're just always there for them for any quick questions. Now, let's suppose you want to do a little more than just coaching. We do consulting. We'll write your app. We've done a whole lot of commercial projects, a few of them which we have on our website, and a whole lot more than are not. Not only do we do React with Rails, we do React by itself, and we're doing a lot of React Native work these days. And you're going to see some more about that from us very shortly. Here's um, a client of ours, Blink. We've done the software for them. Check us out at BlinkaInc.com. We have a product, our own product, FriendsAndGuests.com. Please check that out. That is a super heavy duty project using React on Rails. The great thing about friends and guests is since it's our own product, what we do in our consulting is we take parts of the infrastructure of friends and guests and we'll put in your project. So that really saves a whole lot of time and expense for developing all the software that you need. Anyway, thanks, thank you again. Thank you so much for checking out React on Rails. Thank you for considering Shaka Code. And keep in touch. You can always find me at justin at chakacode.com. Aloha from Maui.